Business can happen virtually anywhere, but there's nothing like being there. At National, you can skip the counter and choose any car in the aisle. Well, good morning, church. Oh, what a beautiful sound of the buzz in the room. All God's people here, ready to worship the Lord. I want to welcome you guys, those in the foyer, to come on in. Those watching online, I want to welcome you maybe from your kitchen to your living room, wherever you're watching. Just want to invite you guys to rise up with me 
as we worship and we praise the Lord this morning because he's going to do something awesome. Amen? Let's go. Let's worship him this morning. Sing, who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all his love for me. Yes, his love for me. Come on, let's sing it out. Who the sun, who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. He died for me. Let's declare, church, who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's, in my father's house, there's a place. chosen I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I'm chosen I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am The sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my father, in my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I We're your children, God. We are your children. And we can't be separated from you, oh God. You are for us and not against us. Come on. Let's sing that bridge one more time. Let's declare it. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I'm chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Sing it out, who the sun, who the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my father's, in my father's house, there's a place for I'm a child of God. 
Yes, I am. Oh, nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from you, oh God. Oh, we are your children. I am yours and you are mine. I am yours and you are mine. We are your children. We are your children. Come on, let's sing. We are your children. We are your children. You are our king. Let's declare you are. You are our king. You are. You are our king. Yes, Lord. You are our king, oh God. Yes, we are who you say we are. Oh, God. We are who you say we are, oh God. Oh, we are yours. Sing, you give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken great are great are you lord see it's your breath it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out
with all you got, church. Let's sing it out. All the earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. worthy to be praised, oh God. High above all else, your name, the name of Jesus is so worthy to be praised. The name of Jesus is worthy to be declared over our situation. Anything that you may be going through, the name of Jesus, just speak that over it. The name of Jesus, yes, Lord God, so worthy, so worthy. Like, 
this, this might be a weird ask, but I just want everybody to take just a, a deep breath. Just take a deep breath right now. God gave you that breath. It says, it says in the song, it's your breath in our lungs. Everything, everything from our, our jobs, our, our families, our, our cars, our anything, everything is from him. And, and even the breath that we breathe is from him. Every time we breathe, we can say, thank you, God. Every time, every time, every morning we wake up, we can just say, thank you, God. Because he's so good. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's so good. Hey, I love you. I love you, Lord. For your mercies never fail me. I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness I love your voice I love your voice you have led me through the fire in the darkest nights. You are close like no other. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Come on, let's sing. All my life you have been. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. I will sing of the goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me, your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything, your goodness. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything, your goodness, God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Church, 
sing it out. All my life you have been so, so good. Take me that I am able. I will sing of, of the goodness of God. I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. You're good, oh God. Oh, you're good. Thank you. Praise God. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the brothers to come forward and begin to hand out the bread and the cup. And as we do that, I just want to make a few comments. Just go ahead, brethren, and start. If you can do two things at once, you can watch them and listen to me too. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. <clears throat> Paul, as he references the table of the Lord, says this. And I was praying about this, and this is what the Lord put on my heart. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ. And the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The word there is koinonia. Koinonia. It means communion. It also means participation. It also means partnership, but the word I want to emphasize today is another meaning, and that is the word fellowship. Fellowship. The blood and body of Jesus is our fellowship. We have fellowship one with another. We like to talk to one another. We like to pray together. We like to sing together, and that's a great form of fellowship. But the highest form of fellowship you can have in your life is when you have communion in the presence of God, and that's the fellowship of his body and his blood. Let me just give you a couple of thoughts on that. I, I'm not preaching because we do have a powerful evangelist lady here today who's going to minister the word of God. <clears throat> so communion then is fellowship. Fellowship of what? I'll have one. Thank you, bro. Listen to just these thoughts very quickly. Out of 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29, I'm not going to read. Communion is a fellowship of thanksgiving. He took bread and gave thanks. It's a fellowship of sharing. He broke it. It's a fellowship of receiving. He said, take, eat. It's a fellowship of the lamb. This is my body. In Exodus, they ate the lamb. It's a fellowship of remembrance. This do in remembrance of me. And, and even the Passover was set up as a memorial. It's a fellowship of the blessed hope. Do this till he comes. And it's a fellowship of examination. Everybody who partakes of the Lord's table Examine yourself. Examine yourself. This is not to check to see if you're still saved. Oh, maybe that would help. I don't know. But that's not what we're talking about. It is, where, where am I, Lord? Where am I? There's stuff 
that we all go through. There's attitudes that we let come, come forth in our minds. I have a prayer that I pray every day. God, protect me, deliver me from the world, the flesh, the devil. I don't worry much about the world. I think in most cases the devil's got bigger fish to fry than me. But there's that sucker in the middle called the flesh. And that, and no matter how, I've been walking with God since 1957, and you would think, listen, not until we are glorified and totally glorified Jesus, spirit, soul, and body, will that flesh be totally under control. Now, I know some of you are quite holy, and some of you think you have the flesh quite under control, <clears throat> but does little suggestion thoughts that come into your mind, little, little jealousies, little this and that. God wants us to deal with those things. Okay? This is not a moralistic, legalistic thing. It's just the word. Examine yourself. Because it's a fellowship of examination. And what is one of the main things? People have suffered consequences. Paul makes it clear. Not discerning the body of Christ. From an initial consideration, you would think, we need to understand truly what this bread and this cup means. That's a good point, but that's not the point, I think. The point here is not discerning the body of Christ. Taking this, partaking in this cup without making sure your attitude toward all your brothers and all your sisters is right. Four things to discover here. Jesus is Lord. He's the undisputable head. The church is his body. Others we have to consider and then our own place. Be neither proud nor falsely humble. Just be who you are in Jesus. Father, we thank you today for this precious gift that we can celebrate today, gift of being able to communicate with one another as we commune with you in this Holy Communion. Hallelujah. Jesus took bread, broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take eat of it. Amen. And after the same manner, when he took the cup, he said, this cup is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yeah. Got to get the right signals here. I feel in my heart that we, we have to sing that um, goodness of God, that chorus one more time. All our life, he's been faithful. There's never been a, a moment in our life where we were outside of his presence outside of his hand of strength, of authority, of control. Oh. I want to sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. 
very breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. I will see, I will see of the goodness of God. Yes, Lord, thank you, God. That all the days of my life, your goodness is running after me. From the moment that I was born, to the moment when you say, okay, child, it's time to come home. Your goodness is running after me. Thank you, God. Lord God, just give us eyes to see your goodness, Lord. Eyes to see that we, even though we may not understand everything, you're still good. You're still strong. You're still sovereign. You're still faithful. Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, offering team to the front, please. So as we go through the morning here, we'll call the offering team to the front and then pray for them. Heavenly Father, as people take this moment to count the blessings you give them, and they also bless others who are less fortunate, and we bless them and bless the works of this church. Heavenly Father, bless for multiplication and thanksgiving from their hearts, cheerful giving as they give. Lord Jesus, bless each and every one. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so offering team, if you want to go down the aisles, ladies and gentlemen, if you have the envelopes you'd like to contribute, by all means, go ahead. Uh, if you haven't, you can always go online, People's Church. You can interact, e-transfer, whatever it might be. So we'll let uh, Daniel, if you guys just want to strum them, something quickly here, or sing through, whatever it is, and then we'll get going with announcements. Right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to People's Church. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord? Hey, that's good. All right, one more time. We got the doors open. Let's let the neighborhood hear it. Who's happy to be here? <laughs> Wonderful. All right, well, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us this very sunny weekend, April 14th. Hard to believe we're halfway through April already. Gorgeous day out there, but it's wonderful that each of you had made time to come worship the Lord together. It's, uh, you know, it's wonderful that we have our friends that join us on YouTube. Good morning to you. But there's nothing like being here together. And we do appreciate when everybody comes in. Then go about your day after. But very important, make time first and foremost for 
our Lord Jesus Christ. So those wondering, those that are here every week know, but uh, my name's Neil. I'm one of the volunteers here at Peoples, and we have the honor and pleasure of greeting each and every one of you. Uh, a number of new faces here today, welcome. Whether you're down here, you're up in the balcony, or watching online at home. Um, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. These guys start giving me charades from up top there, and I don't can't always decipher it. But uh, anyways, that being said, whatever it might be, welcome to each and every one of you. Yes, there's a sister there who's new this week. Welcome. And uh, if you didn't receive it, grab one from the foyer. We've got these um, bulletins. has a number of things, the schedule of what happens throughout the week. Also got some photos in there. And on the back side, uh, upcoming events and a section for you to write notes in. If you do have prayer requests, contact the office. If it's within printing time, we'll get it into the bulletin. Otherwise, we can pray after. This always gives you a snapshot of what's upcoming or what's going on with the various ministries. So that being said, many of you are aware that uh, this past weekend we talked about it over and over and over, that we had a very important event coming up. That was our 2024 Women's Conference. How many ladies that are here this morning attended that? Right. Okay, so I see a lot of hands in the air. I didn't hear a lot of clapping, but I know you were there because I snuck in uh, to uh, drop off some of the town texts and all, and then I was there yesterday morning, very briefly, and saw all of you. Wonderful time. From what I hear, um, everyone had an amazing time. So anything we do at the church, you know, very important. We want to thank each and every one of you. Those that are here, those watching online at home, people that had invited friends, uh, without volunteers, without teams to support these things, we would have a very tough time. So hats off. Let's give a round of applause to the volunteers. So with that being said, I'm going to ask, um, well, I'll quickly do this and we'll get you guys up here. So just a reminder, we haven't done this in a while. It's in the bulletin, but I thought I'd run through it. Prayer, prayer, prayer is key. If you need a Bible, let us know. The church will give you a Bible. Just let them know at the info desk. But if you're interested to come out physically for prayer, Tuesday mornings, Wednesday evenings, and then pre-service 10 a.m. prior to the service here in the prayer room. The other two days are in the other building, our Family Life Center in the chapel. So join us there. And then every Wednesday morning. So again, we had the ladies' conference yesterday. I'm going to call the ladies up here. So Rosemary, if you want to bring them up. Gisela, if you can come up here, please. Um, so with that, we normally had our special event, but every Wednesday morning... 9.30 a.m. in the gym in the other building, there is our ladies' time to refresh. So with that, I'm going to give the mic to Rosemary here. They want to uh, say something quickly. This lady in the silver jacket and the silver hair is the one that makes it all happen. She makes it all happen. And we want to honor her today and thank her because without her, this would, we wouldn't have Elsie. And then not only does she invite the speakers, but then she has them at her house, and she even feeds them. And her husband is quite gracious about it all. Gunther, take a bow. You're a good man. Hallelujah. So we want to bless you, Gisela, and thank you. And God, it doesn't go unnoticed. And uh, I, di I just can't stress enough uh, just the, uh, the things that God has put in Gisela and she gets the plans, then we say yes, and we do it, and sometimes she has to come and say no this way or whatever, but it's because of her, and we want to, and we know it's because of God. So bless you, Gisela, and thank you. I just want to thank everybody that volunteers. Like, without them, I couldn't do it. We wouldn't have a ladies' meeting without the volunteers, and with all the ladies coming. If you didn't come, yeah. we wouldn't have a meeting. So thank you for coming, and thank you for always helping out and always be willing to help. And since I'm talking, uh, <laughs> on Wednesday, on Wednesday, Anita Pierce is going to be here. She's another evangelist that travels all over the place. So I'd like every lady here to come from 9.30 to 11.30, maybe 12. Uh, so do come. You'll want to hear her. She's another great evangelist. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One more round of applause for them. So as Gisela mentioned, this Wednesday, they've got another guest, Anita Pierce. Many of you remember her. She's been here over the years. Um, I don't know. I know some years I think she's brought CDs and sold them as well, so come prepared for that. 
So that being said, that's Wednesdays. And a quick reminder for everybody, those that are uh, grade 7 to high school to grade 12, this Friday night, youth. So make sure you come Friday night, 7 p.m. when you come here. Through the parking lot, the last door, it says the branch or youth lounge. That's where you want to come. And Daniel, Daniel, want to give a wave? Those that don't know, Daniel's our youth leader as well, so connect with him. If you're on Instagram, kids, uh, you get messages through there as well, okay? So check that out. And uh, one more thing. So we've always got wonderful events to connect with the community. Many of you know May is Missions Month. I always love doing that. And so we'll get that going soon. We'll get more information. But the reminder, as we talked about last week, mark the dates, take that big red pen out. Forget the red pen. Put this on your fridge and uh, start preparing for that. It is the Interma International Food Fair that we've done for a number of years. Last year was the first year since COVID it came back. Resounding success. For those that are new and don't know what it is, it's fantastic. It's a, take my word for it. So you pay a fundraising fee to come in. That all goes to the missions committee. A number of families from the church or groups from the church will volunteer and have different tables set up. I think last year we had 27 countries, something like that, where Gizel said, okay, enough. We have enough countries. We don't have the space anymore. And uh, each one you get, whatever the fee is, you pay it. You get a passport. You go to each table. It's amazing. You get a little bit of food. Next thing you know, the plate's full. I think I had gone to every station. I think it was three times I had to go around. And it's fantastic. You sample food from all around the world. You connect. Everybody comes in their... Uh, traditional dress, and even if you're not from that country and you say, hey, nobody's doing this country, I want to represent it, by all means, we'll get some decorations. It's a great night in the gym. We usually get some of the other rental groups here to work in as well, and uh, we'll have more, more information from the missions team. That being said, though, again, mark the date. May the 4th must be here, okay? And that's always in the evening. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick five-minute break. And then after, we're going to get Pastor Duncan to come up here, pray, and then introduce Elsie, our guest speaker. She's here live. She's not from Cape Dorset. She's not in uh, somewhere else in Cuba or anywhere. She's here in person, has been all week. So it'll be great to hear from her. And that being said, moms, dads, grandparents, whoever's taking the kids to Sunday school, out the doors to the left to the Sunday school area. If you do have a toddler or you need the nursery, we do ask that you stay with them. Or toddlers, we can see how it is. Uh, classroom kids downstairs. After the service, mom and dad, please pick the kids up. We don't want to release them uh, just to be on their own because they are a lot of them are fairly young, so we want to hand them over. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to give you five minutes. Get up, shake a hand, meet someone, introduce yourself to someone new, and we'll be back shortly.
Hello. Ladies. I can say that one of them was my wife. <laughs> I was just thinking in the, some of the traditional churches, they have what they call a call to worship. How many ever heard that? This is what we're doing here now, back from the fellowship to worship. As soon as the boys are done. <laughs> The all-seeing eye. <laughs> Big brother. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Stop that now. We're going to take some, a few prayer requests, and then we're going to have Sister Elsie come minister to us. So, Father, we are so thankful that we can not only come and sing and rejoice and hear your word, but we can do our part. We can pray. And there are some folks mentioned here, and Lord, you know there are others. And, but for those who have seen fit to put their names in, for this lady called Susan, we don't know her, but touch her and bless her. And a lady called Rosemary, not this Rosemary, but another Rosemary, whatever her needs are, minister to her, bless her. For John Holmes, who's here, bless him. Continue to touch him, strengthen him. Dear sister Anna, oh, minister to her, quicken her, strengthen her. And our beloved Kay, minister to her, quicken her, Lord. Let new energy, new strength, new vitality come into her body. Hallelujah. And for uh, Kevin, the guy on the cajon this morning, he is... Um, uh, situations... <clears throat> relative to employment and so on. So just bless him. Help him, Lord. And Nancy, minister to Nancy. And Father, we pray for the missionaries. Oh, God, we have it in this country where a little bit of traffic or something thinks we're having a problem. And they go through so many things in the foreign field that I just bless and keep your hand upon them and strengthen them. Lord, we're praying now for the, the, the leadership process of this church, and uh, we pray that you will grant wisdom and, uh, as, as uh, the search goes on. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray especially now for Israel, as we just saw in the news where Iran sent some bombs and missiles and stuff just, Lord, just get involved in that situation over there. Oh, Father God, we, we try in the natural. We get our defenses. We do our this and our that. But the security of any nation is in the Lord. Help them turn to the Lord, Lord, not only in their traditional way, but in the real way. Reveal yourself. Lord, our prayer is what Paul's prayer was. My heart's cry and desire to God for them is that they be saved. So just bless it, minister. <clears throat> minister to all now in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, fresh from a world-changing ministry at People's Church. Hallelujah. God bless you. Come, Elsie. Give her a great welcome. Amen. Do you use this one? I'll use that one. I'll use anything. Oh, what a character. <laughs> what a character he is. Man, we just finished two days with the ladies. It was an awesome time. Thank you, ladies, for all of you that came out and how encouraging you were with your presence. God changed the lives. I heard uh, testimonies of what God did last time. I know I will hear many more testimonies. And uh, thank you for inviting me. It's been a great time. Um, I love this church. You've got a good church here. People's Church is a good church. You guys are so faithful. Faithful. 
You're faithful to one another. You're faithful to, to volunteer and to work. I follow you on Facebook, and I see all this stuff that you're doing. You're busy bees all the time. And you work together. You cooperate. Yesterday, the men made and served breakfast. What a blessing that was for us. You are so faithful. Um, God honors faithfulness. He honors your heart for the nations, for salvation, for, for the lost. He honors that. He loves it when you do that international missions month of May. What? That's awesome. And I've been the, I have not, the, my, my ministry has been the benefactor of offerings that have come from that month. It's gone into Cuba, it's gone into Cape Dorset, gone into other places, and I just say thank you. And I want to say again that you are faithful, and God honors faithfulness. He honors that. And I looked at this this morning, and I saw the tree with all the fruit on it. And people, get ready. The fruit is going to start, there's going to be so much fruit on your tree that you're going to have to figure out how to, what to do with all the fruit. Your fruit is going, your tree is going to be full like that, and there's going to be tons of sweet, sweet fruit on your tree. Because God is moving. God's moving everywhere. And he's moving here in Canada, and he's moving here in Surrey. And you folk are the light in Surrey. You shine brightly for him. He said that you are a light. Don't hide that light. Don't be submarine Christians. That means we surface every Sunday, but during the week we go and we become uh, bottom dwellers again. And then on Sunday we go and we come up to the surface. No submarine Christians. We rise and we shine because God is doing awesome stuff and we want to be in the right place at the right time and you are in the right place. God has sent the nations to you. It's crazy. Beautiful. You, your mission's fest with all the food and the nations that are represented. That's amazing. That's awesome. And that's all here around you. I want to say I just came back from Cuba a couple of weeks ago. A third of the population of Cuba has left because the nation is in such financial straits. If you have electricity 12 hours out of the day, you, that's all you have. Um, gasoline, petrol, very, very difficult to get your hands on. There is food now, but it is so expensive that it's hard for the people. Their salary runs out by the middle of the month, and then they're trying to figure out how to get through the rest of the month, what to eat. Eggs are more expensive than here in Superstore. Now, you go believe that one. That was hard for me to see and believe, but it's true. But you should see them, praise God. And you should see how full the churches that I work with, I'm not talking about other churches, the churches I work with, they're full. And they said, Elsie, we need benches. We need benches. So we left money so that they could make more benches, build more benches. I was in Spain last fall, and I'll tell you, God is moving in Spain. Spain has a bad reputation for being a really hard country. I don't think that. I don't see that. There was 400, 500 people in the meetings. And even though when I did the altar call, I, was, I remember specifically in both places, I was doing it for something else, and up came these young adults and they're weeping, and I said, what do you want prayer for? And they say, we want to get right with God. We want to give our lives to Jesus. I wasn't even doing an altar call. There was so much hunger that they were on their way up there. Ethiopia, I haven't been in Ethiopia. I would love to go there. I understand God is just doing amazing things in Ethiopia. It's springtime. And they're about to send out 15,000 evangelists. And they're going to go all over Ethiopia and into the surrounding countries, some of which are not 
a good access for Christianity, and they're going in. And, and this missionary said they're fearless. They're, they're not afraid to die for Jesus because they love Jesus. I heard a report about Laos. Laos is not a free country. Laos has got a communist regime there. But the churches in Laos are doing aggressive evangelism. And when I say aggressive, when they say aggressive, they mean they're preaching heaven and hell. They're preaching both of them. And that you're lost until you find Jesus, you are lost and on your way to hell. And one church there just had, in last year, 2023, 12,000 people got saved in one organization in Laos, and they planted 120 churches in one year. Vietnam, the reports coming out of Vietnam, Nam, amazing. They have 3,800 leaders that are being taught to be pastors and Christian leaders, and they're doing it by Zoom, and they're in the jungles, and they're having these Zoom meetings, and people are coming in, sitting on little stools, and learning, and becoming leaders, 3,800, just in this one report. Thailand. I'm always in Thailand. I love Thailand. This year at the ladies' conference, they had the biggest conference ever. 600 women came. And these women are not from Pentecostal churches. They're from more, um, they're from Baptists. They're from other churches that really are not, have not been traditionally spirit-filled. But these women are hungry, and they're coming in, and they're getting filled with the Holy Spirit. God is on the move. There's no doubt in my mind. It's a very fruitful time. And we just have to be, <clears throat> boy, you have to be so ready. You have to be ready. Uh, in Isaiah 61, Isaiah said, it's time to rise and shine. And I've preached on that before in this church, and I'm not going to preach on that. But the Lord is saying, I tell you, it's time to rise and shine. It's time to be alive. It's time to rise up. It's time to be ready. When God asks you to do something or go somewhere, it's time to rise and shine. And the Lord says, we are the light. You are the light. People's Church is one of the lights here in, in Surrey. We are the light. Don't hide your light. The Bible says that the hour is late. There's talk, there's war and rumors of war. There's talk about Third World War. There's talk about Jesus coming. The hour is late. Are you ready? If the Lord came, could you stand before him and say, I served you with all my heart, Lord. I ran the race. I laid aside every a burden I had, every weight I had, and I ran for you, Lord. That's what he's asking us. Jesus talked in um, Matthew 25, Jesus talked about the ten virgins. And... Five were wise and had lots of oil for their lamps, and five did not. And they all fell asleep because the bridegroom was taking a long time coming. And we know that the bridegroom symbolizes Jesus, and he's coming again. Do you want to see him? I want to see him. Do you want to go to heaven? I tell you, heaven's a good place. I got a lot of my family now in heaven. You start to think, the older you get, you start to think about heaven. We need to be ready to meet the bridegroom, whether we meet him on the way up to heaven or whether he comes in the sky and we, we meet him. Are, are we ready? Jesus said five of the virgins were not wise. They were sleeping. Was he saying prophetically that when he comes back, half of the church will be sleeping? Heaven forbid. Not half of the church of peoples. Be alive. I know you're alive. I just had all these ladies in the meetings over the weekend. I know you're alive. I know there's a hunger for more of God. I know there's a hunger to see souls saved. I know you're alive. You're ready to serve the Lord with all your heart. 
I just read about Chen. Chen is a pastor in China. Chen was taken by the government and thrown in jail because he was pastoring, and who knows all what else Chen was doing that the government considered to be illegal. Anyways, they threw Chen in jail. Chen was in jail for one year, and in one year, he led 2,067 people to faith in Jesus in jail in one year. He had a bigger harvest in jail than he probably had in his village or his city where he had his church. Praise God. All things work together for good to those that love God. Don't worry. If the problems come, just ask the Lord, ask the Lord, how are you going to turn that around and make that into something good and make that into a blessing? Because he will. Because remember, God is good, and he is good all the time. Not everything that happens is good. Not everything that happens comes from God. But God is bigger than the enemy. God is bigger than Satan. God is bigger than the governments. God is bigger than, than world powers. God is bigger. And he takes the things that the enemy wants to use for evil, and he turns around and he turns it into something powerful. Praise God. Oh, is your heart on fire for Jesus? Are you on fire? Do you ever notice that when you talk to somebody about Jesus and you just talk, start talking about God, how your heart burns? It just starts to burn because you're talking. It's the Holy Spirit in you just starting to burn higher and higher. Don't lose your fire. Don't, don't lose your fire. The definition of lukewarm is, this is it, living your life in such a way as to not offend the devil. Wow. Lukewarm is living our life as Christians in such a way that we deliberately try not to offend the devil. The devil got offended over this weekend. I woke up this morning with problems with my gut. I had nausea so bad, I thought I was going to throw up. And I had got a strong stomach. And I thought, where is this coming from? What's going on? And the enemy was just not happy. And praise God for prayer. Praise God for the power of the Holy Spirit. Gisela prayed for me. I took some ginger tea, and I tell you, two passed. Praise God. <laughs> Hebrews 12.1. That's where my text is. Hebrews 12.1. Hebrews 11. They're naming the heroes of the Bible and what they did, and how they died, and how they lived. And that they were heroes. Now we come to, he to Hebrews chapter 12, and verses 1 and 2 I'm going to read. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, these ones in Hebrew 11 that have already died and gone ahead of us to their reward, that's the witnesses that surround us. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, that's you and I, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Because we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, those witnesses, those heroes of the faith, those that have gone on before, are cheering us on in the race that we are to run, that we are running. And it says here, 
do not. They're cheering you on. They're saying, run with everything. The world was not worthy of them. Hebrews 11.38, when it talks about these men and women of God, it says, the world was not worthy of them. I would love it if on my grave tombstone was engraved the world, words, the, word, the world was not worthy of Elsie. Elsie run, ran her life in such a way that the world was not worthy. That? Do you want the world to say we were not worthy of such a man or woman of God to live and to, to be around us? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, throw off everything that hinders. That means lay aside every weight. Pastor, when he did the communion, he was talking about laying aside weights and things that hinder us. Attitudes or unforgivenesses or offenses or things that would disturb our communion with God and our communion with one another. Lay aside all the weights and the sin that so easily trips you up. It trips us up. And let us run with perseverance the race set before us. I have run through airports. And I'm dragging my suitcases. And I'm trying to run with weight and with baggage. And when it's talking here about every weight or anything that hinders you, it's talking about baggage. You cannot run with your baggage. I run with my baggage, but I don't like it. You cannot run with your baggage. It slows you down. It makes you want to stop. And the Bible just says we need to throw off our baggage. Throw off the stuff that we're carrying from the past. Have or have had baggage from the past. But I'm just going to name five things that qualify as baggage, but I'm sure there's way more. The first thing we need to throw off is going to run. And I'm bringing this word this morning to you individually as individual people, but also corporately as the church of people's church, okay? This is individual and this is corporate that you can take these words. We need to throw off every bit of baggage. We need to throw off every weight that will slow us down from running the race. And Satan just doesn't want to slow you down. He wants to give you more baggage. He wants you to pick up more baggage. Have you not noticed there is so much offense in the world today? There's just so much offense. You don't know whether you should smile or not smile. You don't know shake a hand, not shake a hand. You don't know what to do because people are so easily offended. There is a spirit that's been released in this world, and I call it a spirit of chaos. Because just swirling and trying to stir people up and stir nations up and cause problems. But watch out for that offense. And watch out what Satan wants you to pick up and carry. He's not happy that you just have weight from the past or baggage from the past. He wants to give you more. I know I'm right. Even though you didn't say amen, I know I'm right on that. <laughs> so number one, throw off guilt and regret for the mistakes of the past. Man, we've all made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. And Satan is there always accusing us and saying, you're such a loser. Oh, you didn't hear the voice of God. Oh, you made a mistake. We have marriages that have failed. We have businesses that went down the tube. We trusted the wrong person. We believed that something would happen, and it didn't happen. We thought we heard the voice of God. Throw off guilt and regret for the mistakes of the past. 
The enemy would just love to put a ton of weight of guilt on you and regret. You can't fix the past. You can't go back and change. Sorry, you can fix some things, but you can't go back and change the past. And we know that. You can only change today, and you can change tomorrow when you come, come in tomorrow. Give yourself a break. We, the Bible says we're ignorant, and we make mistakes. And don't listen to the enemy. He's the accuser of the brethren, and he's the accuser of God. He stands and he accuses God and says as well, where were you, God? Where were you when this happened? Where were you? You don't love the people. He accuses God and he accuses the brethren as well. So number one, throw off guilt and regret for the mistakes of the past. Number two, throw off the broken dreams. You dreamt. You, you put everything into it. You, you thought it was going to happen, and it never materialized. And you feel like you missed it. You feel like you failed. And you doubt that you can hear the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God. You are a sheep, and a sheep hear his voice and follow his voice. You do hear the voice of God. And I'm just remembering something I wanted to say, that I, I, I just think, I already feel that this church has gone to another level from last year when I was here. I was here almost exactly a year ago. There are more people in the church. The presence of God is heavier. The hunger in the hearts of the people is bigger. And the praise and worship team, you're, you're, you're totally at another level. You guys are at another level. God is here. He's working in your midst. Don't listen to any lies of the enemy. Throw off broken dreams. Corporate dreams. Individual dreams. Throw it off. Number three, throw off disappointment and anger with God. Many people are angry with God because he didn't answer the way that you wanted or the way you thought he should. People who are angry with God or disappointed with God, when, when we do that, when we step into that, when we take that weight upon us, when we believe that lie of the enemy, what's happening is, is we open the door to depression and hopelessness and suicide. When you're disappointed and angry with God, it steals your faith. You cannot... Be a person of faith if you're angry at God. So that's a baggage. That's baggage. That's a weight that needs to be thrown off. I have a lovely friend in Cuba called Julia. She is a um, pastor's wife. Her husband, Gonzalo, was a mighty man of God. And he passed away about when he was age 45 from cancer. There were thousands of people praying for Gonzalo to be healed. And God really extended his life. But he passed away. And I remember when Gonzalo was in the oncolo oncological hospital, when he was there with his wife, when he felt strong enough, they'd go around and they'd pray for people in the different beds, and they'd pray for healing for the people in the hospital when he himself was dying. And one day, they brought in a, a young woman on a stretcher and with her mom and her auntie, and they hooked her up to the machines. She was very, very, very ill. And they hooked her up, and it wasn't much longer after that that she actually died, and the machines all stopped. And the doctors and nurses came running. They did if this and that and the other thing. And they checked everything and they tried. And then they declared her dead. And Julia and Gonzalo were in the same room. And Julia felt the Lord saying to her, I want you to pray for that woman. And Julia said, I got up and I started walking across the, the, the room, el salon. I started walking across the room. And as I walk across the room, I hear this voice. 
Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Here's your husband dying of cancer. You have prayed for him a jillion times, and he's dying. Who do you think you are that you think you can raise this woman from the dead? And she said, I just kept walking. I just kept walking. And I laid my hands on that woman, and I started praying for her. And she said, Elsie, I really don't know how long I prayed. But all of a sudden, the machines started to beep and bop and make noise, and, and the nurses started coming, and the people came running. And that woman was raised from the dead. Raised from the dead, and then got saved, her and her auntie and her mother got saved. And I just have to say, if Julia would have been angry at God and disappointed with God because of what was not happening in her husband's body, she never would have had the faith to pray for that woman. And God would not have been able to use her. Things happen in our lives. I don't know why. If it's important when you get to heaven, you can ask Jesus why. But it might be that it's not even important by the time that you get there. Throw off disappointment and anger. Number four, throw off offense. Man, throw off offense. Marriages die because of offense. Families are divided because of offense. I said to the ladies yesterday, I said, I know fine Christian families in my church where the son or the daughter or the daughter-in-law has totally canceled the mom and dad. And nobody's talking to them. And nobody comes to see them. Nobody answers their emails. Nobody picks up the phone. I know people. I bet the same thing is happening here in this church. Throw off offense. People get hurt and never come back to church. Churches get split because of offense. In Judges chapter 6, verse 3, it talks about the Midianites there. And the Midianites, it says right there in Judges 6, that the Midianites were the enemy of Israel. And when Israel... When their cows, when their animals were fat, it was time to harvest the animals. When the fields were ripe, time to harvest the fields, that's when the Midianites would come down. And they'd ravish the country. And they'd steal. And they'd rape. And they'd take away and they'd kill. And that's the same thing. I've seen it in so many churches. That the church is growing, the church is healthy, the church is doing great. And then offense gets in. And offense just grows and murmuring and offense and it grows. And it becomes, it goes through the whole body. And pretty soon there's division. And then they've lost the harvest because half the people go out the door. Half the people that we led to the Lord are gone. People who were offended 20 years ago and still have not gotten over the offense. I know some. You probably know some too, brother. Oh, I don't go to church because, well, in 1966, this happened to me in church. Oh, Shabbat Rabbah. Throw off offense. You men, the men that wanted to stone the woman um, that was caught in adultery, and it says, one by one, they dropped their stones, and they left until there was just one man left. And finally, he dropped his stone, and he left. All the accusers were gone. And if you still have a stone in your hand, I say, just drop it. Just drop it. Maybe you can't go back and even apologize. Maybe you can't fix up the situation. Just drop it. And go on. Get on with life. Get on with life. Throw off offense. And don't take on more offense baggage. Number five. Throw off the fear of man. That's a big one. 
Throw off the weight, the fear of man. Intimidation. The fear of man is a weapon that Satan has used for a long time against God's people. The fear of man manifests in this way, that you need affirmation all the time, that you need to please people all the time, that you compromise your values. Fear of man, it's a spirit. Fear of man helps us, encourages us to compromise our values and not to share our faith, to keep back our faith, to hold back, to not speak. Fear of man. Instead of obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit, we choose to avoid unpleasant interactions. There's a time to be quiet, and there's a time to stand up and open your mouth and speak. And you do it with love, but you do it with the authority that the Lord has given you. Proverbs 29, 25 says, the fear of man brings a snare. A snare. It traps you. It locks you in. It limitates you. You, you can't do the things God wants you to do because you're afraid. Nobody likes to be criticized and rejected, but Jesus did tell us to be salt and light. Now, salt, I love salt. Salt is really good. It makes your food taste good. But salt also preserves, and salt kills bacteria. So that's why they would use salt with meat in the old days when they didn't have refrigeration, because it would kill bacteria. So God says we are salt, and we need to flavor the society and make it taste good and make Jesus taste good. But we also need to be out there killing bacteria and saying, no, that's wrong. We can't do that. The Bible doesn't say that. That's against the word of God. We need to be salt and light. Light gives direction and comfort. I like light. I don't like the darkness. I like the light because then I can see better, and it comforts me, and I know that I'm safe in the light. But the light also exposes evil and corruption. So God has called us to be light. God has called people's church to be salt and light, to make Jesus taste good in this community, but also to kill the bacteria that wants to grow, to shine the light of God's love, but to also shine the light of expose the corruption and the filth and the lies. I know you're doing that. And God says, we just need to throw off fear of man. And I've said this before, and I'll say it here again. I am convinced that my opinion doesn't matter. And your opinion doesn't matter. What matters is the opinion of God. And so when you talk to people and they have all these opinions, you just say, well, the Bible says... God's opinion is, and if you don't like it, argue with God. Don't argue with me. So throw off these weights. They slow you down. They cause you to not be able to run. They get, you get entangled with it, and you fall down, and you can't keep going because it tires you. Throw off guilt and regret. Throw off broken dreams. Throw off disappointment and anger with God. Throw off offense and throw off the fear of man. And the second thing he says, throw off the sin that so easily besets you. Satan never rests. He's always out there trying to lie to us, trick us, pull us in, suck us in. He wants man. I, I notice many Christian people are starting to talk like the world. And I'm not talking about swearing or anything. I'm talking about the way that the world thinks about things. And then you hear Christians are reiterating what they're hearing spoken in the world, especially children. Throw off the sin that so easily besets you, the adultery. Man, shouldn't be in the church. Shouldn't be in the pulpit. 
throw off the lust. Young people, not worth it sleeping together. Throw off the addictions, drugs, alcohol, food, all sorts of addictions, pornography. Throw off the lying. Throw off the cheating. Throw off the anger issues. Throw off the sexual immorality. Throw off the hatred, the hardness of heart, and the controlling spirit. Throw off the controlling spirit. Throw off the criticizing spirit, the complaining spirit. Throw it off so you can run the race. 1 Peter 1, 13 and 14. 1 Peter 1, 13 and 14. Prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus and you really don't have much of a clue of what we're talking about, the Bible says that you are ignorant in your lack of knowledge. That that's not a, that's not a slam against you. We all were ignorant. We didn't know. What we were doing was wrong. But then God comes and says it's wrong. Or somebody, you hear a message and somebody says, no, that's wrong. You can't do that. That's against God's rules. Then you're not ignorant anymore. There was a time when we were ignorant. We are not, if we're born again Christians, we are not ignorant anymore. It says, be holy as I am holy. Just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Some Christians say, ooh, she said the H word, holy. She expects us to be holy. Bible says, Jesus said, be holy as I am holy. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. Jesus is holy. He produces his holiness in us. Holiness is just being set apart for sin, from sin, and set apart to God. I'm not going to sin anymore. I don't want to sin anymore. I want to love you, Lord. I want to obey you. I want to follow you. That's all that holiness is. Throw off the sin. Throw off the sin. Rise and shine. I'm finishing. The Israelites wanted a king. They had only had judges. They wanted a king. So God said it would be Saul. But Saul had baggage. Saul had weight. Saul had baggage that he was carrying. 1 Samuel 9.21, this is what Saul says. We know he has baggage. I am a Benjamite. And apparently there's a ton of stuff you could, I could say about the Benjamite tri tribe. I am a Benjamite from the smallest tribe in Israel. And my clan is the least of all the clans of Benjamin. Why do you say I would be king? Doesn't that sound like insecurity? Doesn't that sound like he's got baggage? Doesn't that sound like he doesn't understand what God wants to do in him and through him? Baggage. And when it came time to crown Saul as king, he didn't show up. And do you know where they found him? <laughs> Chapter 9, verse 9. They found him hiding amongst the baggage. They found him hiding amongst the baggage. He did become the king, but he failed miserably because he didn't let go of his baggage. And he lost the kingship. He allowed pride and insecurity to rise up in his heart towards David. Saul could have been one of the greatest kings going because he had David that he could mentor and raise up. And Saul could have been a great hero because of what he did for David. But instead, Saul was just bound by fear and terror and insecurity and jealousy and pride. And he lost the kingship. He lost it. Then we look at David. 
Saul never dealt with his baggage, and he was a loser. God never created us to be losers. We were created to win because he's a winner. He is a winner. He already won. He has created us to be winners. But to do that, to win the race, to run the race, to do the race, we need to get rid of the baggage that slows us down. David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17. David's father sent him down to the war, the Philistines against the Israelites, with some cheese sandwiches for his big brothers and a few other supplies. And David gets there, and his brothers chew him out, and they call him wicked and proud without any reason for doing that. And then it says, verse 22, David left his things, his baggage. David left his baggage with the keeper of the supplies, the keeper of the baggage, and he ran to the battle line. He ran to the battle line, and he killed Goliath. He won the prize. He became the king. And you cannot run to your destiny if you are hauling your baggage along behind you. You can't grasp your destiny and run at the same time dragging your baggage. It's impossible. And David became one of the greatest kings that there was in the Bible. And David says that God said David was a man after God's own heart. God has called us, God has called people's church to do great things in the kingdom. He has anointed you, and he has called you to run the race. And he has put his fire in you and his fire on your feet. And when Jesus died on the cross, he took our baggage upon himself, and he died for it. He said, it's finished. And we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. He took all of our abuse. He took all of our offense. He took all of our pain. He took all of our losses. He took all of it upon himself on the cross. And he died so that we can go free. And I just want to say that this morning, people's church, maybe... Uh, <laughs> I know that in individual lives, some of you, maybe all of you, are carrying baggage from the past. And God says, just get rid of it. Throw it off. But as a church, are you carrying baggage? As a church, as a leadership church, or as the leadership body, are you carrying baggage? Is there things that have happened in the past that have caused you to lose faith in God or lose confidence that God is with you, that God will lead you properly. And I say even <laughs> individually, corporately, today is a day to just throw away the baggage. Give it to Jesus and repent of the sin that so easily besets us so that we can run. Be willing to love like you've never loved before and forgive like you have never forgiven before. One last verse, Philippians 3. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heaven and earth, in Christ Jesus. Would you stand with me this morning? Shapurabakashandai. Rabakashi. People's church, you are chosen, you are appointed, and you are anointed for such a time as this. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Run your race with fire and passion. The devil can't stop you from being chosen or anointed with destiny because you already have it. The only thing the devil can do is lie and tell you to keep your baggage and to pick up more. But when you surrender it to Jesus, the devil cannot do anything more, and you are free to run like the wind. Lord, we just, I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I pray that you would 
I know it. You've been talking to everybody ever since the communion, Lord. You've just been talking to us about attitudes and baggage and, and things that just need to be thrown off because you want to do a marvelous thing in this place. You want to bring in the nations into this place. You want to fill this house again and again and again. You want to use every piece of this property, every building. You want to have many, many churches meeting on this property. Lord, you have great plans, greater than what we can think or imagine. And Lord, we just stand before you this morning. And Lord, I, I, you're just saying, th throw off the baggage. Throw off the baggage. Throw off the baggage. Throw off the baggage. Just throw it off. And, and dear folk, if somebody would just give me some music up there, some quiet music, if you've got some CD or something. Um, I, I'm going to make an invitation. I'm going to make two invitations. Perhaps you are here this morning visiting, and you don't even really know more or less what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about Jesus. Who has a plan for your life? Who loves you? Who designed you? Who calls you his treasure? Who formed you? Uh, Jesus, it's not by accident that you're here this morning. And if you have never given your life to Jesus, we want to pray with you. If you've never repented and say, Jesus, I need you. I want to surrender my life to you. I just say, to, this is the morning to do that. Or maybe you've been running away from God and somehow you ended up here this morning. Good place to run to. Jesus is calling back the prodigals. It's amazing what's going on. I could tell you stories, especially with men, especially with men. I could tell you stories of young men, young men coming to Jesus, throwing aside their addictions and sin issues and being totally changed. This, so that's my first, my first call. If you want to give your life to Jesus, if, if you want to become a Christian, a follower of Jesus, if you want to be prayed for, we, we want to pray for you. And I invite you to come to this side. But the other part of the invite this morning is, do you have something that's been slowing you down? Have you, are you running or are you at standstill? Did something stop you from running? Are you carrying so much weight and baggage from the past that it's hard for you to run and serve God the way you want to? I'm going to invite you to come to the front. I'm not saying that you'll be prayed for powerfully. I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying sometimes you need to make a step. And just in taking the step and going to the front, and raising your hands and saying, Jesus, I surrender that to you. I give that to you, that attitude. I give that offense to you. Lord, I, I, I forgive that person. Just by coming and laying it down and giving to God, to God, it's finished. It's broken. It's broken. But as long as we sit in our chairs and we harbor the weight and we hold on to the baggage and the weight, we go out the door and nothing has changed. But as soon as you get up, and again, I don't know if you understand me. I'm not talking about coming up to the front and psh, 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 and everybody falling down and having great encounters with God. I'm talking about coming to the front and just saying, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. I won't live with this anymore. I don't want this anymore. I throw it off. I give it to you, Jesus. You took everything on the cross. I give it to you. And when I walk back to my, my car or my bench or whatever, I'm walking back different. I'm not carrying that anymore. Okay? <laughs> okay? If you want to meet Jesus this morning, he brought you here. He loves you. Come on over to this side. If you want to throw off something that's been hindering you in running for Jesus, I invite you to just come up here and just line up. There's going to be a ton of people. There's going to be a ton of people because we all have baggage. We all have baggage. We all have stuff 
that we're holding on from the past that's holding us back. So just go ahead, whatever Daniel. Don't miss this opportunity. The Lord's saying. The Lord's saying. <laughs> He's saying, get ready, church, to run. Get ready to run. Over in Ethiopia, they're running. Over in Laos, they're running. Get ready to run with the gospel. Get ready to run with the fire of God. Get ready. Throw aside everything, 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 everything that slows you down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Free, 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 free. I give it to you, Jesus. I throw it off. I give it to you, Jesus. Free, free, free. Free. I give it to you, Jesus. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it anymore. I won't run with it. I won't carry it. I give it to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Jesus. I don't want it anymore. I won't run with it. It slows me down. I give it to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Jesus. I give it to you, Jesus. Free, 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 a new person, a new creation in Christ, free, 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 Lord, I want to run for Jesus, I want to run for Jesus, I want to run for my heart, I want to run for all my heart, I don't want to be slowed down, I declare freedom, freedom from this day forward. I declare every freedom, breath that freedom, I take, freedom, every moment freedom, I'm away. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor and his wife. Thank you, Lord. Ha, they're running, and Lord, they still got a good race to run ahead of them. I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord. God, give them the wisdom. Help them to hear your voice. Help them to run like, run like the wind. Run like the wind. Run like the wind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We throw it aside all the offense, all the bitterness, all the unforgiveness. We throw it aside. We give it to you, Jesus. You carry it. You took it on the cross. We give it to you, Jesus. We give it to you, Jesus. Some of you that are still in your seats, you need to be, you can pray right there where you are. And you just need to say, Jesus, I give you that offense. I give you that offense. I forgive that person that hurt me. I give you that offense. I don't want it slowing down my life. Shato robo koshondo robo si. Rabo kosho koto robo kosi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Freedom. Have your way in me. Give you my heart. Give you my soul. Give him every weight. Give him every weight. I live for you. Don't run that weight. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away. your way in me have your way have your way have your way in me I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone every breath that I take thank you Jesus every thank you Jesus I'm away. I'll be back I'll be back I'll be back Jesus says I'll be back to you run people's church run run the race that's laid out ahead of you run it's going to be up the hills. It's going to be down the hills. 
It's going to be hard sometimes. Run. Lay aside all the weights, all the discouragements, all the lies, all the anger, all the offenses, all the disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. Lay aside the disappointment. I don't know. That just came out of me right now. Lay aside the disappointment. Lay aside the disappointment. Lay aside the things that the enemy would like to stop you running the race. The race is a good race. Ha, there's a prize. And he's cheering you on. He's cheering you on. Run. Run with fire. Run with fire. Fire on your feet as you run. Ha. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I declare that when I return to this church, I declare that every place in these benches down here will be full. And I declare that praise and worship will take the roof off. I declare that there will be new people here from the nations. I declare that your sons and daughters will be here praising God. I declare that the prodigals are coming home. I declare sons and daughters, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters are coming home and they're walking through these doors. I declare victory for this church. I declare victory for this church. I declare it is a fruitful tree, fruitful tree. God bless you. Run, run the race. Thank you. Hallelujah. Give her a great blessing. What a message. What a message. Both challenge and encouragement. Amen. Let's take it to heart and say, Lord, thank you for this message today. Thank you for touching me. Thank you for opening my mind to areas that I haven't even thought of. And especially be thankful that he gave you the grace to pray and to ask him to touch and to help you. Now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace because you're trusting him. Amen. Amen.